We've got a family performance of the Missian in uh, uh, November. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's so weird to do because um, yeah. we we have played trios together as a family, but um, yeah. my flatmate when I was at Royal College we did the B Mars together oh yes um years ago and he tried to teach me the Messian Quartet he's a wonderful pianist oh, I thought I don't like the music I don't like it. <laughs> but now I love it yeah <laughs> so we're doing it together yeah. as a family what's it like um playing with your daughter <laughs> is been, it a totally different I guess it must be a different it's relationship quite natural because it, it sort of evolved a we did it when they were tiny and then okay. and that was that was fun and they were both very good so then they the older one, the older one was a cellist, and so I mean she and she became a big star. So that okay. was we played together. It was like having a um, having a colleague rather than a daughter when, okay. it got, when we got on stage, anyway. Yeah. And and then it, recently uh, Emma, who went to Oxford, and she literally took about a week before she went to Oxford. She was deciding whether to do classics or music. Yeah. And then, uh, so she she plumped for music and I yeah. sat her down and said, you're not going to get in, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very supportive father. Yeah. And anyway, she not, she got in and she thrived. And then she, she remember the Oxford Phil had a concerto competition, which yes, she won, yes. you say. Okay. Um, yeah, she says so she played, ended up playing with them. And I think that moment she thought, yeah, maybe I could be a violinist. And yeah. so she, um, but I'm, I'm really pleased that they, um, they went through an Oxbridge approach to playing an instrument because I'm sure it, okay. it, it's fertilised a, a much more sort of a creative yeah. mind than the conservative, I mean, yeah. conservatoire um, approach to learning. You know, yeah, they've they've yeah. got questions to ask and yeah. ways of researching and looking after themselves, as it were, rather than being yeah. perhaps told by a uh, teacher. Yeah. But I guess it's it's two totally different approaches, isn't it? Conservatoire yeah. is more focused on performance, but then if you want to go to university, then it's much more cerebral, isn't it? Yeah. Your... I don't know. I I think that um, I I did that when I, when I did the BMARS at the Royal College. There was only about six of us that did the BMARS because it was oh, before okay. before that was the days. And now everybody comes out with the BMARS. Okay. okay. So, yeah. Um, uh, and this was the days before that. What would happen was you'd go to the Royal College and you could take a performance diploma or you could take the GRSM graduate of the Royal Schools of Music okay. or you could do a London University degree Okay. and that London University degree um, was administered by somebody called Ian Spink I think okay. at Royal Holloway oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> and you do some and sometimes you'd go there for, for work and also you do things at Senate House or your exams mm-hmm. um, and so it was but I thought it was a useful um, adjunct to my one-to-one private piano lessons, as it were. Um, but I think that the fact that you're confronted with so many different kinds of music and so many um, uh, even quite obstructive professors who, who ask you questions and challenge you, mm. it's much better. It makes you much more able later in life to deal with your own problems. Mm. And both my children were, well, particularly Joy, she didn't have a teacher after the age of 16. So um, she ah. she just taught herself. She was a really phenomenal cellist. So yeah. she's got everything sorted. And she thinks the most useful things she's done since are composition lessons and analysis. So mm. um, an analysis, of course, is really what you need you know, to yeah. understand how you want it to sound, yeah. rather than being told to turn the flute a quarter of an inch to the... Of course. <laughs> yeah. Anticlockwise. Yeah. And so... Do you take a similar sort of approach with your pianism? Well, I, I think, I think, I suppose that uh, um, at this stage of my life, the last twenty years or so, um, I've um, I've concentrated on Schubert. Yeah. Um, I I mean, it doesn't mean I only play Schubert. No. A wide range of music. Yeah. But there was a moment where, when I got to thirty, when um, a colleague of mine said about 1997, which was two hundred years after the. Birth mm. of Schubert. Yeah. And she had just come back from Montpellier, mm. where she had been leading the Academy of St. Martin in the Fields mm. in a, a performance of five Beethoven piano concertos with Alfred Brendel. And she said, Oh, it was really interesting. He talked to me a lot. And he said, It's really important at some point to specialize because by specializing, you, um, you learn at a higher level, says, which you can then apply to a wide range of repertoire. Mm. And I found that the skills of the de- of the degree were very useful. We said, well, let's do something then. Let's, we decided because mm-hmm. of the date we'd specialise in Schubert, there was pretty much nothing more than that. You know, mm-hmm. we just, just tried to get concerts and festivals and things and recordings. And it really helped us. You know, we, we yeah. put on, on cycles and learned the repertoire and struggled with the problems. And we, we'd had some skills, which we got from, you know, from, from what I'd 
attended in my degree course, mm -hmm. <laughs> some of which yeah. I understood and some of which I didn't. And uh, so that was very useful. And it has, I think, enabled me to, you know, the experience of, of the success of focusing on Schubert for a while enabled me to focus on Beethoven and, and now Chopin. And, uh, yeah. and, and, and so this is where this Endgame project comes in, really, because yeah. it's, it's sort of the fruits of 25, 30 years of study um, yeah. uh, in, in a way that was independent, mm -hmm. um, which is not to... Uh, decry any I had amazing teaching I yeah. had wonderful teachers um, three wonderful teachers and mm -hmm. so um, not to decry what they did for me at all I'm yeah quite, mm. um, so, so tell me about this end game concert series that you've yeah. devised and I mean what was the premise behind this what do you want your audiences to get out of this I know that you're trying to find new perspectives on Schubert and yes. Haydn and Yes, yeah, so it, it, obviously at the moment it involves four strands, and that's Haydn, Beethoven, Schubert, and Chopin. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're composers that I found really uh, central to my work yeah. over the years. And Haydn was something that I always found very regenerative, very playful, um, very open to interpretive changes and... Uh, various different stances. I always feel completely free when I'm playing Haydn. He just oh, seems to well, it's like a blank canvas. Yeah. Um, I don't feel as if I'm sort of having to wear 18th century clothes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's, there's, there's a huge wit. And as I said, this war, this, this freedom. In fact, I once saw a brilliant lecture by um, Eleanor Bailey, who wrote a good book on, okay. on Haydn. And she talked about him saying, being very welcoming and saying, you know, come into my house and you don't need to take your shoes off or mm. you know, kick the dust off, you just, <laughs> just be comfortable kind of thing. And yeah. I always feel that with him. So I've found, even at uh, times of physical injury, I nearly always come back to the piano through Haydn. Mm. Um, so I find, find that, and very liberating. And, it's, and yeah. uh, in fact, in terms of the 18th century, it enabled me to um, appreciate Mozart a lot more <laughs> um, and, and really treat him with a little bit less reverence mm -hmm. than I'd perhaps been guilty of previously. Yeah. Beethoven is Beethoven. I, I really came to Beethoven through the chamber music. Um, I made recordings in the noughties um, uh, of the complete um, pretty much the complete duo works mm -hmm. um, with cello and with violin. Uh, with distinguished uh, colleagues Alexander Bailey on the cello and Paul Barrett on the violin and that was great projects and we have of course involved in that there was lots of research and lots of um, uh, performances creating concerts uh, creating recordings sourcing sponsorship you know all mm -hmm. kinds of things that musicians have to do of course yeah. and that was uh, then I thought well no it's time for me to to play some sonatas and mm -hmm. solo sonatas and I started um well, first of all, I had a, a sort of 10-year plan to play all, all 32. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's going to be a 30-year plan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, it, you know, as soon as, one's, year, yeah, as soon as you start playing a few, you think, oh, no, I want to do those a bit more. Yeah, and yeah. So um, I'm finding uh, that, the pre that, you know, I'm, I need a few extra years in my life to, to keep doing that. But and who knows whether I'll, I'll be completist or not. <laughs> um, and uh, Schubert, as I said, was something I started in 1997. And then around the millennium, I, I I mounted a, a cycle of the sonatas in the Purcell room and I put into that uh, in every concert there'd be one Schubert sonata which mm -hmm. there are 21 plus I played lots of other pieces of Schubert but I also put in contemporary music and brought uh, lots of artists together so in a way it was also part of a, it was it was just a thread that drew together all the different um, things that I used to do I had a piano trio uh, that played rare music. Mm -hmm. So we played Scharfinka and Björnson and all kinds of things. I had um, a very lucky uh, um, meeting with Emma Kirkby, the wonderful oh, yes. soprano. Yes. So we worked together uh, in this series as well. News presenter uh, Richard Baker. We put on Enoch Arden of, of Richard Strauss, a mm -hmm. melodrama. All kinds of things. We had pieces written for the series. And actually, that was such a sort of rich um, learning experience, an indulgent experience for me as well, because I just played what I wanted. Mm -hmm. I invited friends um, and ensembles. And so, yes, and so Schubert has, has, has been an old friend. And I'm, I'm surprised at the directions it's going so, um, in my life. It's now, I now, I've taken it, for instance, in, geographically, I'm taking it to India now. So wow. I'm playing the first cycle of the piano sonatas in India. Wow. In Mumbai, which again is creating new friends mm -hmm. and teaching experiences with um, young children in Mumbai, 
and um, that's and also new reactions from audiences um, out there who are incredibly knowledgeable, amazing, mm. uh, great mm. connoisseurs.